Having recently put out a number of config guides, I've had quite a lot of feedback from subscribers saying they're having problems with the Phoenix A320 and how to configure the reverse thrust and flaps. Welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks very much for watching and let's get started. One point I want to highlight is you can access the controls menu from the top toolbar. I recommend that you don't do that. As results are not consistent, what I recommend is hit escape on the keyboard and then from the menu choose settings and once in the settings menu select controls. With your keyboard as the active peripheral and under general controls make sure it's set to 2024 transversal to make editing easier. Then select your throttle quadrant as the active peripheral. In this video I'll be using the Bravo throttle quadrant. This configuration guide will be starting off where we ended with the config guide for jets and we'll be starting off with the two engine Airbus profile which is recommended or alternatively you can adapt an existing profile that you have. My prop profiles video also linked in the notes below. First of all we need to create a separate profile so with the two engine Airbus profile being active select the small tools or cog icon as indicated and we're going to duplicate this profile. You'll be prompted to give it a name, give it any name you like. And surprisingly, I'm going to call mine Phoenix A320. Select OK. And we now have a new profile. And all changes and modifications will be made to this profile. Your new profile should now be active. Change that filter to Assigned, so that we have visibility of all our current bindings. Then we're going to head up to the search bar and we're going to type in throttle. To make this profile work with the Phoenix, we're going to have to delete some of the bindings. Note our filter is still on assigned. To delete an item, highlight it and then press the backspace key. And the first target is throttle to decrease. If it doesn't highlight, then click on the description. It's now highlighted and press backspace and it's gone. Do exactly the same for throttle to cut. Throttle 1 decrease and Throttle 1 cut. So the only items left under the Throttle category are as displayed above. So we have Throttle 1 and Throttle 2 axes and the Auto Throttle 2 go around, which in this profile is configured to the small red button on Throttle 1. As I'm using the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, I'm using the commercial handles. The Bravo Throttle Quadrant levers are laid out for a two-engine jet. Once that's done, let's change the filter to all or none. We still have throttle in the search box. And the first item we're looking for is hold throttle reverse thrust. Note it's hold and not toggle. On the Bravo, make sure your throttle levers are at idle and the reverse is pushed down or in the off position. We're now going to click in the box to start scanning. Then lift throttle one reverse lever in the up position. Leave it there and then the reverse lever for throttle 2 in the up position. Then throttle 1 lever down and throttle 2 lever down. Remember we have to move in and out for something to record. They've now been recorded. Therefore to enter reverse thrust we need to pull up both reverse levers. For thrust lever number 1 or throttle 1 I'm now going to record a cut command. This step is optional but recommended. There it is, throttle 1 cut. I'm going to click in the box to start scanning. Then I'm going to move the reverse lever up and back down again on throttle 1. And it records as joystick button 10 on the Bravo. This will return the throttle to idle when we come out of reverse. To do this, select the tool icon next to the command. And here we need to set control on release. So when the button is no longer active, the throttle returns to idle. That's all we need to do here, so let's head back. And we're going to do exactly the same for throttle 2. Looking for throttle 2 cut, click in the box to start scanning. This time I'll move the small thrust reverse lever on throttle 2 up and back down again. It records. We must set control on release or this whole config won't work. That's now done. And now we need to get both of the thrust levers into reverse when we enter the detent position. And this is the tricky bit. There's only one hold reverse thrust instruction. Ideally we would want hold reverse thrust throttle 1, throttle 2, throttle 3 and so on. But unfortunately that's not available. So to activate reverse thrust, scroll all the way down to the bottom because we're going to have to choose decrease throttle. 
which means the decreased throttle has to be effective on both engines. Click in the box to start scanning. Now follow the procedure exactly as I am doing. Leave a one small reverser up, then throttle one into detent. Throttle two reverser up, then into detent. Then throttle one out of detent and the reverse lever pushed forward. Throttle two out of reverse and the small lever press forward. So we've now actually assigned four buttons to this one activity. Let's just confirm that by selecting the tools icon. We can see on the left it's decreased throttle, buttons 10 and 11 are allocated, and buttons 26 and 27, which is the detent, are also allocated. And we're done. Save and back. Now let's jump into Sim and see if this has actually worked. We'll also be testing the flaps. Make sure your flaps are set to flap axis as it was in my original jet configuration. And if your flaps aren't working, there's one reason why. It's because you haven't read the manual. Step one is to jump into the cockpit, then select the MCDU or MACDU main menu. Click on the button. And top right, we're going to click on the config option. The bottom left soft key has a config for the controls. Let's select that. Click on the soft key to enter the menu. And here we can see an option to calibrate. So we're going to select that. Make sure your Bravo is in the idle position on both throttles and both reverses push forward or in the off or not engaged position. It'll ask to set the levers to max thrust. Leave them alone. Just select next step. Idle reverse once again. Leave them alone. Select next step. Now it's asking to set it at idle. They're already there. So next step. And now it'll ask us to set the thrust levers to the climb position. Move them to the climb position on your throttle quadrant. Once you're happy with that, select next step. And that will be the climb position where your levers will move to climb in sim. Next, it's asking us to set uh, maximum continuous thrust or flex. We do exactly the same. Set it to the position that we want. Then select next step again. And this time it's toga, so push the levers all the way forward, and you guessed it, press next step again. Bottom right, it gives us the option now to store the calibration. Select that to save the throttle calibration. Now importantly, see the small arrow in the top right hand corner. This means there's another menu. Select the button on the MCDU as indicated. This is where you can calibrate your joystick. And rudders, I don't need to do that, so I'm just simply going to hit the arrow again. And this brings us to the flaps configuration. If you don't configure it, a flaps on axis will not work. Make sure your flaps are in the full up position. It'll record that position and then select next step. When you do that, it will then ask you to set your flaps for position one or one flaps, then two, then three, etc. Simply follow the instructions on the MCDU, moving the flap axis to the appropriate position as needed. Once you've calibrated the axis, it will then be active and you'll be able to use it. That's it done. I hit next step and I get the option once again to store the calibration, which you must do. That's it. We're done. We can hit return. And now it's time to test that everything works accordingly. We'll be able to monitor changes in the power setting here. So let's now give it a test and we'll start off with the air brake or spoiler. That seems to be working fine, operating through its full range. If you remember in my two engine profile, I set the flap lever as arm and disarm spoiler, which seems to be working. Let's test the flaps now. Position one, two, three and all the way down. Happy with that. Now time to give the throttles a test. Let's test engine number one. Ignore the warning sounds. That's working. We can see the power change in the top panel. Now thrust lever number two. And now most importantly, let's check the reverse thrust, lifting both of the small levers up, moving both throttles into the detent. And the aircraft moves into full reverse, exactly as it should. I'm very happy with that. Let's now come out of reverse thrust, push the reverse levers forward and out of detent, and we return to idle. 
You can also get idle reverse, engage the reverse levers, move into detent, just wiggle the levers slightly and you should find idle reverse, there it is. Now full reverse, reverse idle, well all seems to be working as expected. We have to put both engines in reverse at the same time but that's real world anyway. If you're using a throttle quadrant other than the Honeycomb Bravo, well you can just adapt and modify this profile to suit. Where we're lifting the reverse levers, you can just configure that to the detent position as well and it should work no problem. Just a quick note that Microsoft do have a tendency to change the configurations from time to time but at the time of recording this video, early December 2024, this was a working configuration and I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you have, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It really does help the channel and helps me out. As always, stay well, look after yourselves. See you again soon and ciao for now.